guys, welcome back to my children's book series, Story Time with Mommy and River. And I'm going to do something a little different today for part nine. We're going to do four stories from Winnie the Pooh, and this is Lessons from the Hundred Acre Woods. So we'll be talking about the different characters and things like believing in yourself, and you can count on me, and you know, just some life lessons that I think are important for you little ones to understand and to hear. So hopefully you enjoy and let's get started. All right, we're gonna read Everyone is Special for our first book. And while I'm reading it, I want you to remember just how special you really are. One lovely morning in the Hundred Acre Wood, Tigger bounced over to Pooh's house for breakfast. When he arrived, Piglet and Pooh were sitting at the table eating. Good morning, buddy boys, Tigger called. Tigger bounced right over to Pooh's mirror. He looked back and forth from the mirror to his friends. Just as I suspicionated, Tigger said thoughtfully, no stripes. Whatever do you mean, asked Piglet. You and Pooh don't have stripes, Tigger insisted. Except on my shirt, Piglet replied, looking down. So why should I, Tigger asked. Pooh thought for a moment. Because you're a Tigger, he said. That's no excuse, Tigger sputtered. And in that very moment, Tigger decided that he would lose his stripes. The only question was, how? Why don't you talk to Kanka, Piglet suggested. She's very good at making chocolate and jelly disappear from Rue's shirts. Maybe she'll know how to make stripes go away. So the three friends headed off to Kanga's house. When Tigger told Kanga and Rue about his stripes, Kanga said, I really like your stripes. Why do you want to lose them? Without my stripes, I'll look more like everybody else, Tigger replied. Suddenly, Rue had a great idea. He told Tigger to follow him into his room. There were little pots of paint everywhere. Rue, Piglet, and Pooh picked up paintbrushes and began to paint over Tigger's stripes. By the time they were done, there was paint everywhere, but no stripes to be seen. Tigger was a lovely orange color all over. Kanga insisted that they all take a bath and clean up. Tigger loved taking baths. He jumped right into the tub of soapy water. Soon the four friends stepped out and dried off. Why, Tigger, Rue giggled, your stripes are back. Imposterous, cried Tigger running to the mirror. Tigger gasped when he saw his stripes. He was so sad he didn't even feel like bouncing. Some nice dark mud might cover your stripes, Pooh said. That's it, buddy boy, Tigger cried with joy. I'll take a mud bath. Tigger bounced over to a nice muddy spot. He jumped right in and rolled around until he was covered in mud. Eeyore happened to be strolling by when he saw Tigger knee deep in mud. Missed a spot. Eeyore sighed, dipping his tail into the mud. When they were finished, Tigger smiled. Now that should do the trick. It'll do, Eeyore said. But I thought the stripes were kind of nice. But Tigger wasn't listening. He was too excited about losing his stripes. Race you to the bridge for a game of poo sticks, he cried. Everyone hurried off except for Tigger. He just stood there, covered in mud and as stiff as a statue. Pooh turned around to see Tigger standing right where they had left him. He hurried back to the mud puddle. This is ridiculous, Tigger huffed. If I can't move or bounce, I won't feel like a Tigger at all. Pooh, Piglet, and Eeyore carried Tigger to the stream and threw him in. When he was back to normal, Piglet asked him if he was ready to stop trying to lose his stripes. No siree, Piglet, old pal, Tigger said. Tiggers never give up. Pooh suggested that they visit his thoughtful spot to think, think, think. He was sure that he could come up with an idea for losing Tigger's stripes. Hmm, Pooh said thoughtfully. I don't suppose you'd like to try my special honey dip. I'll try anything to lose these stripes, buddy boy, Tigger said, perking up. Er, what is honey dip? They all went back to Pooh's house and gathered several honey pots. Then Pooh took Tigger outside and poured honey all over him. The thick, gooey honey had covered Tigger's stripes completely. Now Tigger was a lovely golden color. But no sooner were they done when a swarm of bees flew by and chased Tigger back to the bridge. 
Tigger took a deep breath and jumped into the stream. He had been through a painting party, a mud bath, and a honey dip. What else was a Tigger to do? Looking up, Tigger saw Owl flying overhead. Hello, Tigger, cried Owl. I could see those big, bold stripes of yours a mile away. Suddenly, Tigger felt very proud. On his way back to Pooh's house, Tigger bounced by Rabbit's. Glad you stopped by, said Rabbit. I wanted you to see my striped tulips. I got the idea to plant them from your stripes. Tigger began to think. Hadn't everyone said that they really liked his stripes? Why, his stripes had even helped Al spot him for way up high. Now they'd given Rabbit the idea for a new flower. Imagine that. Hoo, 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 Tigger chuckled. Stripes are splendiferous. And feeling like his old, bouncy self, Tigger bounced back to Pooh's to make an announcement. I've made up my mind, buddy boys, Tigger said. I've decided to keep my stripes. Why, I just wouldn't be me without them. After all, that's what makes me special. Okay, this one is called Believe in Yourself. And I know that sometimes when you're having some trouble doing something or learning something new, just remember to believe in yourself and you will make it happen. Piglet hummed cheerfully as he finished sweeping his front step. He was rather enjoying himself, as he often did when he was busy tidying up his house. It was a comfortable sort of thing to do. Just then, a very excited Roo hopped into view. Hello, Piglet, Roo shouted. We're going on a picnic. Pooh is coming, and Tigger, and Rabbit, and Eeyore. Would you like to come too? Oh, yes. This is just the right sort of day for a picnic, Piglet exclaimed. Wait for me, Roo. I'll just get the acorn cookies I baked this morning. We're going to the big meadow, Roo told Piglet as they set off to join the others. Mama says there are flowers and butterflies and soft places to sit. It all sounded wonderful to Piglet. Here you are, buddy boys, Tigger cried when Piglet and Roo met up with their friends. And right across that stream is our perfect for a picnic meadow, Pooh said. Piglet looked at where Pooh was pointing. Then he looked at the stream. They had to cross over a log to get to the other side. Suddenly, Piglet wasn't feeling so happy anymore. Come on, everybody, Tigger called. Follow me! Tigger bounced across the log, chattering to Pooh. Pooh crossed, balancing a honey pot in each hand. Roo jumped into his mother's pouch, and they crossed together. Eeyore ambled slowly across with a picnic basket in his mouth. Can we speed things up here? Rabbit muttered from the rear. Soon, only Piglet was left. Oh dear, cried Piglet. I can't do it. I'm much too afraid to cross. You are kind of small for this sort of thing, aren't you, little buddy? Tigger said. Too bad. What are we waiting for? Rabbit asked. Let's get hopping. We can't go without Piglet, Pooh said. Piglet felt terrible. He didn't want to miss the picnic, but he also didn't want to cross that log. It's too hard for me, Pooh, Piglet said. I just don't think I can do it. But Piglet, Pooh said, you've done hard things before. I have? Piglet asked surprised. Oh, yes, Pooh said very definitely. Remember when you were sleeping over at my house and Al came to tell us there were shooting stars outside? Pooh asked. I remember, Piglet said. It was very dark and I was afraid to go out. You were afraid, but you went outside to look at the stars anyway, Pooh said. I did, didn't I? Piglet said, and it was wonderful. Piglet felt a little better. He stood up a little straighter. Thank you for reminding me of that, Pooh. He said, you're welcome, Piglet, Pooh said. Hey, and wasn't that you who saved Roo from the bees, Piglet? Tigger asked. That was splendiferous. Yes, yes, that was me, Piglet said. Aren't you scared of bees, Piglet? Rabbit asked. They sting, you know. Yes, I know, Piglet said, and I was scared, but Roo needed my help. You were very brave, dear, Kanga said gratefully. I was? Piglet asked. He was feeling better and better. I was brave once too, Roo said. Remember, Piglet? We were brave together. Piglet didn't remember. 
It was at the sack race at my birthday party, said Rue. Oh, yes, now I remember, Piglet replied. Everybody said we were too small to be in the race, and we were afraid they might be right. But we showed them, Rue shouted. We even won. We sure did, Piglet laughed. Piglet wondered how he could have forgotten. He had felt so proud that day. See, Piglet, Pooh said. You've done lots of things you didn't think you could do. Yeah, said Tigger. You're downright courageous. Piglet took a deep breath. He looked at the log. Then he looked at his friends. This is hard, but if I try, I think maybe I can do it, he said. Piglet stepped onto the log. He was still scared, but he crossed the log anyway, one careful step at a time. When Piglet had made it across the stream, his friends all cheered. We knew you could do it, Pooh said. And now I know I could do it too, Piglet said happily. I just had to remember to believe in myself. All right, this one is called Listen Up Tigger. And River really needs to pay attention to this book. So when your parents are talking to you or your teacher, make sure you listen up so that you can hear everything. It was Christopher Robin's birthday. Pooh gathered all his friends together in the hundred acre wood to plan the perfect surprise party. We'll need someone to bring balloons, party hats, and oh yes, the honey, Pooh said. Hoo hoo hoo, what can I do? Tigger bounced up and down excitedly. Stream the streamers, toot the horns. I'm ready to spring a ding ding into action cause springin' is what Tiggers do best. Rabbit frowned. If you just stop bouncing around and listen, he scolded. No problem, buddy boy, said Tigger. I'm listening. But as they went over the plans, Tigger fidgeted and fussed. He whirled and wiggled. He jiggled and wriggled. He hardly heard anything that was said. While everyone was getting things ready for the party, Tigger was busy too. He was busy bouncing and running around. Poor Tigger just couldn't sit still. As Kanga and Roo worked hard to blow up balloons, Kanga asked Tigger to tie the balloons to the top of a tree. But instead, Tigger started to pop them. How am I doing so far, he asked. Tigger, cried Kanga. I said to tie the balloons to the top of that tree, not pop them. Sorry, Tigger apologized. I'll listen harder next time. Rabbit was busy baking a delicious honey birthday cake. Tigger, why don't you pour in the honey, Rabbit suggested. Just a spot will do. So Tigger poured in what he thought he heard, just a pot or two. The honey flowed over the pot and all over the floor, making a big sticky puddle right in the middle of Pooh's kitchen. Tigger, why don't you pay attention, Rabbit snapped. Oops, said Tigger. I'll listen better next time. Tigger found Piglet rolling up streamers to take to the party. I could use a little help, Tigger, said Piglet. But again, Tigger didn't listen. He raced about, hanging streamers and decorations, until he heard a little voice calling. Help! Help! cried Piglet suddenly. Not to worry, pal. I'll get you out in a jiffy, said Tigger. He gave one hard tug, and Piglet went spinning like a top. And with that, Piglet crashed right into Pooh's table, where Eeyore and Al had been gathering hats. I guess I must have missed a word or two of your directions, Tigger said. Give me one more chance. I promise I'll listen. Well, we do need someone to bring Christopher Robin to the secret spot in the wood for his surprise party, said Al. Secret missions are a Tigger specialty, Tigger explained. And with that, Tigger was off to get the guest of honor. After all their hard work, everyone gathered for the party. The decorations were in place and the birthday candles were lit. Everyone was hiding behind a big tree, ready to jump out and yell, Surprise! Mama, where do you suppose Christopher Robin is? whispered Rue. Tigger was supposed to bring him here. Oh dear, he is late, sighed Kanga. I hope Tigger paid attention to what we told him. But Tigger was having a hard time recalling exactly where the party was supposed to be. Was it at Piglet's or Pooh's? He took his best guess. This way, said Tigger, tugging on Christopher Robin's arm. Tigger bounced through the door to Pooh's house and yelled, Surprise! But no one was there. What's going on, Tigger? 
asked Christopher Robin. Follow me to Piglet's, said Tigger. But Piglet's house was empty too, and so was Kanga's. Gee, I must not have heard right, Tigger said to himself. Where could the party be? Where is everybody, asked Christopher Robin. Nobody seems to be home. Tigger and Christopher Robin sat down to think. Meanwhile, Pooh and his friends were getting worried. Maybe we should go look for them, offered Kanga. So off they went to search for Tigger and Christopher Robin. There you are, Pooh. We've been looking for you, cried Christopher Robin, spotting his friend. But we've been looking for you, said Pooh. This was supposed to be your surprise party. Aw, shucks. It's all my fault, said Tigger sadly. I didn't listen when I was told where the party was, and I ruined everything. It's okay, Tigger said Pooh. There are still balloons and hats and games and birthday cake for everybody nearby. And I think Tigger has learned an important lesson, said Al. Tigger has learned to listen. You bet I have, Tigger agreed. It's listen, listen, listen. Hoo-hoo! Christopher Robin thanked everybody, and then he made a wish before blowing out his candles. Sorry about the surprise, Tigger said sincerely. But from now on, pals of mine, I promise to be all ears. And stripes, of course, laughed Christopher Robin, because that's what makes Tiggers extra special. And last one is you can count on me, which I know all of you, your parents feel that way about you because you could always count on them. And that's always something very important to remember. It was early morning in the hundred acre wood. Pooh sat at home with his honey pot, enjoying a little smack roll for breakfast. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Pooh ran to the door where he found Christopher Robin. Hello, said Pooh. Would you like some honey? Oh, no, said Christopher Robin. I really can't stay, Pooh. I just wanted to ask you a favor. Christopher Robin had pulled his wagon to Pooh's house. In the wagon sat a bright red kite, a colorful ball, and a wooden sailboat. Why, Christopher Robin, Pooh cried. These are your very favorite things. Yes, I know, said Christopher Robin. I'm going to Al's house. Would you take care of them while I'm gone? Of course, said Pooh. You can count on me. I knew it, said Christopher Robin. Thank you, Pooh. Pooh was just finishing up breakfast when there was another knock at the door. Back so soon, Christopher Robin, asked Pooh. No, it's me, Piglet, said Pooh's very best friend. It's a beautiful day, Pooh, said Piglet. Would you like to join me and play at the stream? I promise to watch Christopher Robin's things, Pooh said. Well, said Piglet, perhaps you can bring them with you. Pooh thought this was a very clever idea. So the two friends headed into the wood, pulling the wagon behind them. They were coming around a bend when they ran into Roo. What is that you have? asked Roo, pointing to the wagon. Christopher Robin's favorite things, explained Pooh. We're watching them while he's away, added Piglet, and we're headed for the stream. Come with us. Soon the three friends came to a steep hill. I don't think we'll make it, said Pooh. Some things might tumble out of the wagon. But how will we get to the stream, asked Piglet. Think, 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 Pooh said, stopping to sit down. I know, cried Piglet. We'll take the things out of the wagon and carry them over the hill. Then nothing will spill out. They all agreed this was a wonderful idea. So Roo carried the ball, Piglet took the kite, and Pooh held on to the sailboat while pulling the wagon behind him. As they walked up the hill, Roo kept thinking about the ball. I know, he said when they reached the stream. Let's play catch. But it's Christopher Robin's ball, said Pooh. What if something happens to it? We'll be careful, answered Roo. I promise. I don't know, said Pooh. Then he thought about how much he loved to play catch, too. Well, I suppose it's all right if we're careful, he agreed. When they got to the stream, the three friends formed a circle and threw the ball back and forth. It was great fun, and they made sure to be very careful with Christopher Robin's ball. Soon, Roo got tired of playing catch. Let's play with the sailboat, he suggested. Oh, no, said Pooh. We couldn't possibly. Oh, we'll be careful, promised Roo. Pooh looked back and forth from Piglet to Roo to the wonderful sailboat. He knew that he shouldn't, 
But before he could stop himself, a very loud, just this once, popped out of his mouth. Piglet and Roo helped Pooh put the sailboat into the water. The boat looked so pretty, the water felt so cool, and the breeze was so nice that Pooh forgot all about his promise to watch over Christopher Robin's things. Just as they let the sailboat go, the friends heard a familiar voice. Hey, buddy boys, Tigger called, bouncing into the stream. First they saw a giant splash. Then they heard a loud glub, glub, glub. Oh my, said Pooh, watching the sailboat sink. This is all my fault, said Roo. Mama always told me I should take care of other people's things, but I really wanted to play with the sailboat. Watch this, buddy boys, yelled Tigger, reaching down into the water. He grasped onto the boat and brought it up. Pooh stared hopelessly at the soggy, mud-covered boat with its drippy sails. Bother, Pooh was sure things were as bad as they could get. Pooh sat down with a loud plop. Something wrong, buddy boy? asked Tigger. Christopher Robin was counting on me to watch his toys, but instead of watching them, I ruined them, groaned Pooh. We can fix this in a jiffy. Follow me, Tigger cried. Then he and his friends headed for Pooh's house, where they tossed the toys into the bathtub and scrubbed away. Fantabulous, grinned Tigger, just like new. Except for this, said Pooh, holding up the wet kite. Don't worry, I have an idea, replied Roo. Watch this. Roo took the kite outside to a warm, sunny spot. Soon it dried and the water stains were gone. When Christopher Robin returned, Pooh explained what had happened, and he said he was sorry. I believe I've learned my lesson, Pooh added. I'll treat your toys just as if they were my very own. From now on, you can count on me. I promise. All right, well, I enjoyed reading those stories. They made me feel really good, and I hope they made you feel good, too. So which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section. And then make sure to like and subscribe and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss the next part in our series. Bye!